Hello, so in the first tutorial I made in this series, I looked at exposure control on a smartphone. That's the idea that you can override the auto exposure on a smartphone. So auto exposure is wherever you point your camera, the exposure automatically adjusts. So if you point it at a shadowy area, it makes the image much brighter. If you point it at a very bright area, it makes the image much darker, just so it picks up the detail it wants. So there's another tutorial that goes into that in slightly finer detail than this one. But there's a couple of details I didn't mention in that because I wanted that to be really quick, but I just wanted to mention now. So to grab the exposure on a smartphone, you touch the screen where you want the exposure to be. So let me get an image here. So if I touch it on the sky here, it goes really dark. If I touch it on the shadow area here, it starts brightening up. So that's where you, how you grab your exposure. But also you can take that up and down just by touching the screen. You can drag that higher. The higher you go, the brighter it goes. So it goes really bright or darker. And the darker you go, the lower you go, the darker it goes. And that's so important because if you want to have atmosphere in your photographs, if you want to have photographs that um, have a kind of darkness to them, or if you want to shoot into the sun and keep it really bright, that selecting your exposure and dragging up and down is important. But then we're going to move on to details I didn't discuss in the first one. You can actually lock your exposure. You can do exposure lock. So if we hold a point and hold on it for a second, it says AE and AF lock, which stands for autofocus and auto exposure lock. So it's locked in that position. As long as I don't change anything or touch the screen again, wherever I selected a second ago, it's keeping the exposure the same. So no matter, no matter where I point it, it's absolutely fixed on that. You can also, whilst it's locked, you can tell it to go lighter and darker as well. And then it will stay at that. So no matter where you point it, it sits at that same exposure, that same level of darkness, which is really useful if you're moving through a space where like trees or something like that, sometimes you want to stick with one exposure, get it right and just not have it move around. Um, also working this way can be really useful in video as well. So if you shoot video and have it on auto exposure, then as you move your camera around, it's always adjusting the exposure, no matter if you've got the sky in it, it's going to make it a lot darker. Let me just see if I can get through to the sky. If you've got the sky in it, it's going to make everything very dark and silhouetted. Let me actually start filming here. And then if you suddenly move to the shadow area, it can really jump around. And that can look really unnatural. That can kind of look, that doesn't look like how you see a scene. That doesn't look like how you view the world. So you can use the exposure lock here. So grab your exposure from a point. And because I held it, it's locked it because I held it for a second. And now I've effectively got really subtle, quite slow control over the exposure. So often when I'm doing my films and videos um, of the landscape, I'll always be touching the screen and I'll just nudge it up, make it a little bit brighter. And then as I move to a different area, maybe looking at the sky here and I want to bring out a little bit of that detail, I can just gently bring that down. But subtly, when it's on auto and you're just letting the camera do all the thinking for you, it can jump all over the place and it can look a bit kind of unprofessional and a bit distracting. Whereas if you've got it on the screen and, and it's locked, the exposure and aperture is locked, but you're slowly telling it to go lighter and darker, you can get a really kind of steady change of light, particularly when you're moving through woods or forests and you're moving from one kind of light to the other. Instead of it doing that really quick sort of jump in changing light, it just subtly moves from one to the other because you've got that control there. You can drag up and down. Um, so yeah, I hope that's useful. I'm just going to show one more thing that I always set up on my camera on my iPhones when I'm photographing. It's to do with HDR, high dynamic range. So I'm going to quickly go to that now. So we'll stop for a second. So anytime I use a smartphone and use the camera on a smartphone, I try and have it on HDR setting. HDR stands for high dynamic range. And that means you blend, it, the camera automatically blends two exposures. And it means you get a much more, much richer detail across the image. You get detail in the bright sky and detail in the shadow areas. So if we go to settings and in settings, click on camera, you've got quite a few settings on the iPhone, not too many, but you've got smart HDR, which is the thing we're looking at here. I always turn that on and it means any photograph I take, as long as I've got keep normal photo checked, any photograph I take, it takes two versions, it takes a straight photograph, which is just one image, but then it takes an HDR one, which is where the camera, when you press the button, it takes a couple of exposures, a light one and a dark one, and it blends the detail in both. And 
I find it really hard to know which of those images will be best. It depends on the light situation. Sometimes the HDR can look amazing. Sometimes it can look really fake and strange. So I always, as a safety net, shoot on both. So I have smart HDR on and then keep normal photo on. So I get two versions of each view and then I review them, have a look at those two photos. And there's usually one of them is better than the other. One of them has better detail. Um, so let me see if I can demonstrate that now. If I take a picture there, and then you'll see we've got two versions of it and the car's in a slightly different position. And between those two versions, you can't really see much difference to be honest. But sometimes, especially when it's sunset and you're shooting into the sun, it's quite dramatic. So um, it's just a recommendation. Try having your HDR on. You might find that one of the images is better than the other and you suddenly get a much more kind of rich, detailed image from your smartphone. So I hope that's been useful. That's just a few extra features that I think about when I'm taking photographs with a smartphone and trying to control the exposure. So we're just going to have a very quick look at how to control the exposure on a Samsung. We've looked at iPhone so far in this tutorial and the previous one I shared. It's exactly the same idea. This is quite an old Samsung, but it still works the same on more modern versions. Um, so you can grab the exposure from where you want. Let me just move around so you can grab it from the sky the shadow area, and you can see that exposure jumping around. But then you can also drag down and drag up and tell it to go lighter and darker. So very similar to the exposure control on an iPhone, you can drag it down if you want to suddenly see that detail in the sky, or you can grab your exposure off of there. Um, and it just gives you a little bit more subtle control that grabbing the exposure from a certain place and then by pulling up and down on the screen, you can manipulate it tell it to go up and down so yeah it's the same idea as a iPhone it's just in a slightly different place you've got um, this block over here um, which shows you how the lightness and darkness is going higher okay so I hope that's been useful it's just a few extra little details on how to make the most of your smartphone when you're out photographing